All right, so today we're gonna make some cups. So I'm starting with a little bit under our two pounds of clay and you'll see about uh, how big a cup it is. So everybody's like two pounds and what you can make out of two pounds is a little bit different, right? That some people will be able to make a pretty big cup and then some people, the cup won't be big enough with two pounds. So I can't really tell you start with this much clay and then you'll make this big a cup. It all depends on how much clay you leave at the bottom, how thin your walls are, etc how much comes off in your hand. So all the same rules apply as before. We slap it down and we just start throwing. So since this is like our third day of throwing, we move faster through these beginning parts, right? I wanna be close to the wheel. I wanna be squeezing with my legs and I hunker in like this and I wanna center as I go up. And now is the time that if you wanna start using your bag clay, you can, because we will start trying to keep these today, okay? And it's not a big deal if you don't end up keeping one right? But we want to start trying to thinking about keeping stuff, okay? And as you, you will continue getting better as you throw. Like, you guys have already come such a long ways. I'm super excited about how much progress everyone's made, right? So here we go and go back down, right? So it's, it's looking, I want to go up and down one more time to make sure it's centered. I'm too busy talking and not paying enough attention to what I'm doing. Looks good. I'm going to push it back down, right? All right, so then I'm gonna flatten this out using that method. All right, so now I am ready to open. The thing that we wanna think about is how big do I want my cylinder? Because the width of the cylinder will determine how wide my cup is to a certain extent. So if I want a narrow cup that's really tall, I can squeeze this cylinder in. So like this cup here, right, is taller and narrower. I can actually have a little bit narrower amount, but if I want a nice wide mama-san cup, like really chunky around, right? I would want this mound to be wider and I can just make it wider just by pushing it down like that. You see, I just made it wider. So there, and that's gonna be a slightly wider mound. So let's just go with that. This is gonna be a wide cup. So I know that this cup now is gonna be wide. So I'm anticipating that it's not gonna, I won't be able to hold on to it by my hand. So this is gonna require a handle. So there, and then I'm gonna open just like I do before, just like that, go down. Do, 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 All right, so then I stop, and this is the first, like, it's very critical that I get the thickness of this bottom correct. Because part of making cups is we're gonna trim the bottom. So I'm gonna stab down and check out the thickness. That's about the right thickness, pinky thickness, that's good. And that will give me clay to trim off, and I'll talk to you about what that means next time. So then I want to curl my hand over and pull back straight. Pull, 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 pull back straight like that. So I'm opening up a flat bottom, right? Keep going, pull, 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 pull back straight. There, and I'll stop right about there. So that's my flat bottom. Now's the time to smooth that out. Because if we look at the bottom, it's a little bit ripply from those, um, from me pulling back. So take your three fingers on your right hand and make sure, make them flat. See, one, two, three, they're flat across like that. You see that? And that means for me that I have to kind of bend this middle finger. And then I want to take my sponge and hold it like that, flat here, holding it with a sponge. And then I'm from the, see, so this is the right hand side of the wheel, right? That's spinning away from me, right? I want to take this and put this down like that and start rubbing it back and forth a little bit. So I don't try to hold it in one place, I'll kind of move slowly back and forth, and that will help smooth out the bottom a little bit. You guys see that? So now my bottom should be super duper happy smooth. I wanna do that now. Okay, so now the bottom is nice and smooth, and then we'll start doing my raising. So here, we wet the in, out, outside. So the outside has a tendency, see how it's narrower here and wider up here, you guys see that? So what I wanna do is I actually want a cylinder, but this is already flaring outward a little. So I'm gonna take care of that right now by pushing this top part in a little, not down here, see, skinnier wider. I'm just going to take my hands. It's a little bit like centering and I'm going to push in on these, this part right here. Just kind of push that in. There we go. You see that how now it's standing up and that's actually constricting a little. That's what we want. All right. So now I'm going to do my raising and make it thinner. So push from the outside, push from the inside. And remember that I'm, I want to maybe use my new clay, right? My bag clay for this, not the reclaimed clay. So I raise it up once, and then as I'm raising, I wanna visually check if this part of the cylinder way down here is thicker than that, right? Cause I would love it if it's even. Same thickness here, same thickness here, 
right? So one way we can check that is I can use my, my needle tool and just stab it through, right? You see, I don't know if, can you guys see it? The needle tool sticking out there and I push the needle tool back and then I can measure the thickness and then I could do the same near the bottom, stab it all the way through and then push it back and then I can check the thickness. It looks pretty good. So here, and then I'm going to do another raise up. So I push in from the outside and raise and go up. And then it always feels like to me that you have to squeeze harder on the bottom part. And as you raise, you release the pressure. There we go. And I'll go again. I'm wet the whole thing, wet the whole thing. And then I squeeze like that. And then I go up. There we go, making a good even thickness cylinder. See that? Woohoo, that looks really good. Now, now we'll begin to thinking about the shape or the form and the surface. So the first thing I wanna do is inside here, I want to clean out all the water. There's a bunch of water in there and goopiness. So I'll take my sponge, squeeze it out like that, and then just stick it in the bottom and clean out the inside water. Then I will take two ribs like this. So I'll take two ribs and, and they can be any two like this. See that? And I'll hold them opposite each other in one inside the cylinder, one outside the cylinder and scrape up the sides. I'm not pushing very hard together. They're just scraping the surface. And that will remove all the throwing lines here and smooth it out and scrape off the wet goopy clay. So here we go, push, push. Right, see I'm pushing and they're paralleling up as they go up. There we go. So I get up to the top and you can see that the clay, all that clay has kind of come off, the wet clay, and then I'll scrape that into my bucket, my water bucket, and I'll go again. So this is drying out the surface, removing the excess goopiness and removing that finger throwing texture. There we go, so that's looking pretty good. Now I begin to think about the shape. What do I want this to be? Right, so I could leave it like this, right? And it's pretty big around, right, for my hand. So it would require a handle, and we'll talk about handles next time. But I can also try to shape it. So let's try to make it into a shape or a form. And so we talked a little bit about that last time, but I could use this part of my rib. You see this curvy part? So instead of, I could push it out flat like that, like using this wide part, but I'm gonna roll it over and use that part a little bit. I'm gonna push on the inside here and push it out. And I'll show you where I'm pushing by pointing on the outside. So maybe I'll start pushing here and then pushing out and go slow for this. You see that? And then I'm going down, 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 down. Oh, so I can stop and I can look at that form and decide, do I like that? And actually that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty excited, but maybe I'll push it out one more time just for fun. So I'll point here. I'm going to start here, push down, 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 just pushing. And so you see that the form completely changed just by doing those two things, right? It kind of has a belly here. It doesn't look like it's just a straight cylinder anymore. It kind of has some life right to it. It's kind of has something going on now. Maybe so this part I think is looking good, but then maybe I can push this part in a little. So when I push that part in, I'm going to use the tighter part of this curve, right? Right here and kind of push back very gently. You see that? And then that will create a little bit of a narrowing area. I can't push really hard. So remember that clay loves to expand when you push, but it doesn't like getting narrower or contracting. So this, it kind of is more like you're trying to coax it in a little bit. And then that helps you see, and that changes the form, just gives that more definition there. And then I'm gonna smooth out. There's a little bit of a throwing line. I'm gonna smooth that. Maybe I'm gonna push out this area just a little bit more. There we go. Oh, I'm happy with that. So, so then when you get the form to what you like, then there's a, I'm gonna practice this, even though, so you do not need to cut off the rim, right, on your pieces. But I'm gonna show that to you one more time. I hold it like a pencil, right? And then that this rim does not need to be cut off. I would normally leave it, but we're gonna show you. Hold it like a pencil and then bring it in and the tip touches the, tip touches the clay. And then each revolution, I plunge it a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. 
until I come out the other side, right? So now I made it through and that piece will come off, right? And that makes that top completely level and happy, right? Um, this top needs to be level because I am going to use that to trim later. If this isn't level, that's gonna cause some trouble next class. All right, so then this top part looks really cut off and it's dry and it has two really sharp corners here and here inside and outside. So remember that you're gonna be drinking out of this and so these soft lips are gonna to be touching this kind of coarse sharp part. So we wanna soften this area and make it nice and round. So first of all, I take a wet sponge and I just kind of wet that surface a little bit because it was dry. And then this is our new tool for today. It's a piece of chamois on a film canister and you can get them from over there. The film canister only helps you find it later. Right? Otherwise we lose them all the time. It's this chamois part that's important. You wanna soak this in water so it's all happy and flexible like that. Otherwise it feels like a piece of cardboard. And then you wanna take and hold it between your index and thumb on both hands like this. You guys see that? Index and thumb. And then you wanna make sure the loop goes up. It makes like a U shape. There we go, like that. You guys see that? And then I take that U shape and I bring it, bring it down so it touches the rim and then I start the rim going, and then I want to put a little bit of downward pressure and a little bit and a very, very small amount of squeeze together. A little bit of downward pressure and a little bit of squeeze together. This is important because what are we trying to do? We're trying to round our rims, right? And then you'll see it. You see how nice and round that rim is? The rim becomes super happy and round. You guys see that? You want it to be like perfectly round because it's going against your lips, round, happy, lips round happy rim right that's what we want so that's important right and then what's the other thing we need to do is we need to undercut right again hopefully you are practicing your undercuts on your other ones because uh, you don't want this to be your first one and then so you take hold this like a pencil right in your right hand use the very tip of it go underneath like this at an angle use the tip the to put a mark on the surface and then slowly, slowly each revolution, push it one down, a little bit down, a little bit down, a little bit down. So it touches the bat. You can hear it touching the bat. I pull it out. And then so this pot now is a is thing. And then this ring of clay here is separate. This is important because this will really cut down the amount of time you spend trimming. Makes life a lot easier on the next thing. And then I put that there and then I want to scoot that clay away. Like that. There we go. So that clay goes away. I'll do it maybe one more time to clean it up. So now you see how you can see the pot kind of now take shape. And because I undercut it, you can see it. Now for this next part, you really need to dry off your hands because we're going to lift this guy off. Even though we're throwing it on a bat, these bats take up a lot of space and we don't have that many of them. We are going to get a board. I'll move these guys off of there because these are from this morning. We will get a board like this, right? Pop it on your, where you're working like that. And then what we're gonna do is get my wire tool and I'm gonna un make sure, okay, so make sure your hands are dry. And then I'm gonna slice this off while the wheel's spinning. So hold the wire tight against the wheel, spin the wheel super slow like that pops out, make sure your hands are dry. So dirty is okay, like a little bit of clay on there is okay, but not with water on it. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna touch the pot as much as I can with my whole hand, fingers, everything, just kind of conform all the way around, as much surface contact like that. And then I try to pick it up and you see, I could pick my pot up and then put it on my board like that, right? And then if your pot has warped a little bit, let's go top down. So if when you were squeezing your pot, you warped it, let's say, oh no, I squeezed it too hard. You see how it's like squashed this way? What you'll do is you just do a counter squash in the opposite direction and you see how it comes back to round really fast because you want it mostly round, right? When you do that, any questions about that? All right, so I'll throw one more for you guys super fast. So what we'll do is we'll make this the more speeded up throwing version. Less talking, more throwing. We'll get through the centering part faster. So for me, for this time, I'll use my slightly faster wheel speed for this, right? So 
because I'm trying to rush through it more, trying to keep you guys from getting too bored and trying to give you as much time working as possible, right? Maybe one more up and down. And we're gonna do a slightly different form for this one. So when you're at home this weekend, look at all the pots in your cupboard, right? Try to find some form, some shapes, and then that you like to use, right? And then, and then bring those, think about how that shape is working, right? Or if you have different shapes in mind, like I always wish I had a hot chocolate cup, think about what that means, what that will look like, right, to you. How that's different than a coffee cup or something. All right, so I made the inside, I did the thing, right? So I smoothed out the bottom. I'm gonna squash it back in like this. And now I'm gonna start raising to go up. So outside, inside, press together, raise up, making sure the walls are even, right? Raise up again. Oh, it's getting a little wobbly. Slow down, John. There we go. Wet it down one more time. So this will probably be my last probably be my last raise here like this i'll squeeze from the outside push from the inside go up and then so i'm already thinking about what do i want this to be right so i'm already thinking about that oh look at that that's good so then this is one of the new things right we want to use our ribs on the inside and outside the scrape Basic, oh, first, always first, sorry. Always first, you wanna clean out any water that's on the inside. So I take my sponge, clean out the water on the inside, make the bottom clean. Then I take my two uh, ribs and I do a little bit of pressing against each other, right? To clean off all the throwing marks, to get rid of all the extra gooey clay that's on the outside, like that. Do it again like that there we go then i start shaping it so it's so maybe this one instead of pushing it out maybe i'll spend a lot of my time pushing it in so you remember pushing in is a little bit harder to do it's slower and you kind of have to coax the clay into pushing in so i'll use maybe this broad curve here and just kind of apply some inward pressure here you see that so the clay will slowly move in so what am i trying to make i'm trying to make kind of an hourglass shape by pushing it in Right, you see that? So it'd be more constricted in the middle. So just like the other one, I push it in a little bit, or I, the other one, the first one, I pushed it out a little bit. I think about what, how that shape is looking like, cause I could stop at any time. That may look good. Oh, no, I, that doesn't look good maybe to you. Maybe you want it more pushed in. So let's push it more, push it more in. So I'm gonna spend more, you know, spend a little bit more time pushing this part in. Maybe I want the cons most constricted part here. So I'll spend longer pushing that part in. And then I'll come down like that and I'm moving around. And then now there is a, something else I can do, right? Cause the constricted part here looks constricted because there's a difference between here and here. I also can take this part here and flare it outward a little bit and that will make this constricted part look narrower. That makes sense. So here I could just push this area out a little and little changes mean a lot with these things. Does that make sense? It doesn't take much. And then you see how this looks much more trumpety, right? I created, I'm messing around with a form. So, and then I'll still practice and chop off the rim. I'm thinking that looks pretty good. Chop off the rim and then I wet the rim using my wet sponge, and then I'm round the rim using my chamois, like this, bring it, make it like this U shape, right? And then bring it down over that rim, put a little bit of downward pressure and a very small amount of inward pressure like this. Very, 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 very small inward amount of inward pressure. And I spend some time doing that till it's rounded because we want this rim nice and round. Because remember, you're sticking this in your mouth. It's like you're going to kiss it, right? And your mouth is a very soft and happy personal space. So there, it's nice and rounded. And then I'll undercut right here. I'll just go in like that just a little bit and then use my tool and sweep that piece of clay away. And then 
I will wire it off. Oh, let's bring the board over first. So the good thing about these boards is, right, you see how I can get multiple pots. I can get at least one more over here, right here. I can get at least one more here and at least one more here, and this will easily fit on my shelf, right? That's the benefit of using these boards. We do not have a lot of these bats for everyone, but we got tons of boards. So I undercut it like that, take that wire away, and then I dry my hands off on my towel, and then I bring my mostly dry hands, I try to touch it, and as much of the surface area contacted with my dry hands, and I lift straight up, and then I'll plop it, let's put it over here, because that's closer on camera, like there, bloop, right there. And then I can look to see if I need to do any correction, and then I now have two of my pots already done. Woo! And then, so what are we gonna do next time is, oh, uh, let, I will double wrap these, right? Because it's five days till I get back to these again, right? That's a long time. If I don't wrap them, they'll be rock hard, okay? So wrap them, double bag them, put them in the, into the damp room, right? And I want them leather hard for next class because that way I can trim them and put handles on, right? And what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, so then try throwing these. Use your new bag clay for this. That makes sense to everybody. Any questions? Oh, and then read over the assignment because there's some hype. Let's look at what the hype and everything. There's some minimum qualifications. Needs at least be at least four and a half inches tall and three inches wide, right? And so there are rulers over there for you to use, things like that. Any questions? Yes, question. So it doesn't, so the reclaimed clay still will work. It's just not as good, right? And so if you're thinking you're gonna try to keep stuff, Try switching over, but if you're thinking that you're probably not gonna keep anything, keep using reclaimed clay. You can still make things to keep though, right? It's just not quite as good quality, the reclaimed clay when you're starting. Good question. Any other questions? All right.